Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Uh, now this week I'm joined by Matt Vaughan uh, in Boston. Hey Matt. Hello. Matt. Matt's our principal developer advocate for Parallel Cluster and of course Parallel Cluster Manager. And Matt, we, we've got to talk about it. Parallel Cluster 3.3 came out last week um, and it's a big release. There's just like an absolute ton of new features in there. Uh, and I wanted to get us together just very quickly so that we could run through them and actually explain what some of these things are. So we're going to keep this pretty quick this afternoon, but we do we do need to sort of give people some background as to what some of these features are uh, whilst we are also preparing lots of blogs and, and workshop material that's going to come over the next few weeks. So uh, let's see. So what was in there? As, as far as I can tell, we had multiple instance type allocations. Uh, we had dynamic file system mounts. We had support for Slurm accounting. A lot of people are going to be yay about that one. Um, and then, of course, support for ODCRs, which is on-demand capacity reservations. We'll probably have to explain to people what those are. But why don't we start at the top of that list? <laughs> Tell us about multiple instance type allocation. Or what does that mean? Um, this, is a, this is a cool new feature. So essentially, when you are setting up your parallel cluster. Um, if so, historically, if you wanted to be able to resource a Slurm queue with multiple EC2 instance types, you could do it, but it was kind of a workaround. Um, uh, there were there were various things that you had to, there were various things that you had to do, and what our customers told us was that they really wanted to be able to just specify a list of instance types and have parallel cluster do the heavy lifting of figuring out where to uh, where to spin up instances and how and to spin them simply, up. That's just simply so I, I, if i'm getting this right that's just simply because there's there's potentially many instance types that may actually resolve the needs for your customer. That's right. And there's actually and like things like m4 sorry m5 m6 c6 r6 mm -hmm. all of those things they're architecturally identical except for a thing you know minor things like how much memory is available and if if your primary thing that you were looking for was a C6, say a C6i, mm -hmm. you could get, all, right. get an M6i and an R6i, and you'd, you'd be happy with any of those, right? Absolutely. Um, and in fact, if, you're, uh, if, you're, if your requirements are even more flexible, you just need to run on uh, x86 chips. Then you can even mix uh, AMD and Intel um, instance types together. The only key thing is uh, the instance types have to be the same number of vCPUs, Yep. or CPUs if you're using bare metal. Um, and if you're using accelerators, GPUs, or, or other other uh, other types of chips, they have to be from the same manufacturer. So, But other than that, you're pretty flexible. Okay, so same number of cores if you're looking for CPUs and obviously the same architecture. You can't mix ARM ones with, mm -hmm. with x86 ones. Well, that'd be just weird. Um, okay, cool. So that Fun. was it. And so you, mm -hmm. so you plug these things into the compute environment definition inside uh, Parallel Clusters config file, and well, Bob's your father in my case. Absolutely, and in fact, this is this is a real recurring theme for all of these new features. Um, usually, there was a way to do X, but it required you to log into the head node and um, and change configuration files, etc. Um, in Parallel Cluster three three. These are defined in the infrastructure as code definition for the cluster. And that means that it's much more maintainable, much more sustainable, and frankly, just easier to remember, you know, this is just what's going making, on. This is just letting customers have a more pleasant life. I like that idea. It's, this is a good mm -hmm. way to solve problems. Okay. Dynamic file system mounts. In times gone past when parallel cluster has allowed you to uh, spin up shared file systems, things like FSx for Lustre and so forth. It did that on your behalf at cluster creation. Now, the sad thing was, was that when you took the cluster away, when you shut your cluster down and, and destroyed it, it also took the file systems with it. And of course, a lot of people got kind of attached to their data being in those file systems and really wanted to separate the life cycle of those two things. So um, uh, what we've done in the latest version of Parallel Cluster in Parallel Cluster 3.3 uh, and onwards is you can separate those things out. And in fact, you can you can tell the cluster to take file systems that were previously created by the cluster lifecycle and detach them from the cluster so that they are no longer mounted on the cluster, but also more to the point, no longer part of the, the cluster's lifecycle. 
Now, have I got that right? That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, so you get you have persistent storage, ephemeral clusters. Um, another great use case for this is um, let's say you have a centralized data uh, data infrastructure in AWS. That's some FSx for Lustre um, shares, some EBS shares, etc. Um, and you have one or more clusters. You can now um, you can now detach you can attach and detach those clusters to the persistent storage. Um, and so this kind of flips the script a little bit and makes it so that the uh, that the, the core resource really is your data, and we're hanging HPC around it. All right, cool. And there is actually a pretty good bit of detail in our documentation about it, and I will leave the link down there. Um, support for Slurm accounting. Uh, this is going to get a lot of people very happy, right? Uh, absolutely. Um, so, again, you've always been able to, if you knew what you were doing, um, turn on Slurm accounting in Parallel Cluster. But in this version, it's supported out of the box. Um, basically, first of all, you know, what it lets you do is you can manage your cluster users, you can manage groups. Um, that means you can, on your cluster, uh, do resource limiting, fair share scheduling, quality of service, all the things that you like to do on a cluster. Mm -hmm. um, you can also collect and save your job data. Um, you know, who ran it, what did they do, you know, what kind of resources. So that's good for, um, you know, for for all sorts of, you know, all sorts of use cases. Right, for actually understanding to use what this. you use your cluster yeah. for. Yeah, brilliant. That's right, that's right. And using this feature is really easy. Um, you have a relational database. It can be at AWS, so it could be an Amazon Aurora database, or it could be your own um, MySQL compatible database that, uh, that you're running in your, your own situation. Um, you just provide a database formatted URL to that database mm -hmm. and a Amazon Secrets ARN that has the database password. Got yeah. a workshop that shows people how to actually set all that stuff up using a very simply generated CloudFormation template. So if yep. you don't want to know about databases, and trust me, I never want to know about databases. I just want <laughs> to know that they exist. Um, yes. you, can, you can follow that workshop pretty simply, right? It's a good tutorial. Yeah. Works for me. Okay, now um, please explain ODCRs to to humanity that needs to understand yes. what they are first. Absolutely. So they are not a '70s progressive rock band. Um, they are um, <laughs> so ODC <laughs> ODCRs stand for on demand capacity reservations, and what they are is they're a way of reserving EC2 capacity for when and as long as you need it but without having any type of long-term commitment with AWS. Um, so that means, you know, if you absolutely know that you need 64 nodes of, you know, R6 24X large, you can reserve it. Um, and this is just a way of getting around some of the, some of the, the, the vagaries of the, the on-demand computing model. Um, and, and I mean, you could do that with on-demand computing anyway. Mm -hmm. but, but That's right. The challenge may be, particularly in the world of GPUs. The challenge may be that you've got oh, your yeah. hands on a bunch of GPUs and you've been doing your compute and everything's been going swimmingly. And then you, well, you didn't have any jobs to run for a couple of hours. And so Parallel Cluster mm -hmm. sensibly decided to go and put those, put those instances back into the fleet and give them That's away right. because, you know, why do you want to pay for stuff that you're not using? But of course, that could mm -hmm. be fatal because somebody else could come and grab those things and now you don't have any more, you don't have enough GPU nodes. So, ODCRs are a really good way of certifiably guaranteeing that you've got that capacity and you're not going to give it up to anybody. Um, That's right. I think you mentioned yesterday that ODCRs can be shared between AWS accounts, right? They can. Um, you can share your ODCRs among AWS accounts or within an AWS organization. So this is really handy if you're in a situation where you're managing multiple teams. You can just bulk up one big reservation and let them all draw from it. That makes um, a whole lot of sense. Anyway, so Parallel Cluster now supports the ODCRs, and so that means that yep. you can just you can just draw those from a pool for a capacity pool inside your uh, inside your Parallel Cluster definition. That's right. Okay. Infrastructure as code. Ah, praise be. All right. Uh, so it's Friday. You and I need to get back to our progressive 1970s rock bands. Um, we've covered. I think we've covered all four of these things. We've done really well. Um, so if anybody out there uh, has any other things that they want to see us deep dive into uh, overcoming weeks here on Tech Shorts, uh, come and find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, the, the 
Twitter handle is just there. Uh, come and find us also at Supercomputing uh, and chat to us about anything that you want to talk about, about HPC in the cloud. Um, until next time, Matt, thanks for coming. Of course. Ciao. Take care.